Okay, so the Gene Steelers assaulted the Rhino and it exploded six inches, meaning that all the passengers in the Rhino and six inches out, which will just be these Gene Steelers right here, have take a hit of strength four, AP nothing, which means that both units can have their armor saves apply. So let's go ahead and see how many hits actually cause wounds to the Gene Stealers. Gene Stealers' toughness is four, the strength of the blast is four, so you need fours to wound. And there are two wounds. Now let's take a look at how many wounds get assigned to the Black Templars that were inside the Rhino. Same thing, toughness four, strength four blast. And the Black Templars end up having three wounds. Gene Stills are all identical, so they go ahead and use their saves, which since they have extended carapace, their saves are four plus. Roll two fives, the Gene Stealers are completely fine. Now, there's such a mix mash of units in the Black Templar squad, including the Neophytes and the guy with the Power Fist. So, we will assign two of the wounds to the Neophytes, who don't get Preferred Enemy. They have four plus armor saves. One dies. We'll assign one to a guy with just a Bolt Pistol and Chainsaw. And roll to one, so one more Black Templar dies. Following the explosion of a vehicle, the unit trapped in the debris have to make a pinning test, which is their leadership, which is again, even though there's no special characters in here to bump up to ten, the commander is still in the Land Raider back here, so they get their leadership of ten to roll against. They roll a six. They are not pinned. So now we've concluded this battle right here. The Gene Stealers do not get a consolidation move because they assaulted a vehicle. Uh, when units assault a vehicle, they do not get the D6 movement should they succeed. Now let's go to the last assault that was declared by the Orc Interior player, and that is five Gene Stealers going up against the Dreadnought. Okay, so the Gene Stealers have 20 dice to roll. And unlike when the Gene Stealers assaulted the Rhino, because the Dreadnought has a weapon skill, they are they base whether or not they hit on their weapon skill versus the Dreadnought's weapon skill. Also, because the Dreadnought has a weapon skill, their preferred enemy kicks in. So any misses, they get to reroll. Weapon skill six versus weapon skill four, they need threes to hit, and they get to reroll any misses. So we'll remove the failed to hits, all those dice hit, and re-roll the misses. Wow. Okay, so only one additional attack. So the Gene Stealers are Gene Stealers are left with this many hits against the Dreadnought. Now, what do they need to wound? Usually when models assault a vehicle, they use the back armor. Not true for walkers. As long as the walker is not immobilized, they attack the front armor of the walker. It's to represent that the walker is pivoting and moving and defending itself as it's being attacked. So with a strength of six, they need sixes to wound and then relying on their rending to actually penetrate the armor of the dreadnought. So again, the, the gene stealers so the Gene Stealers start with a strength of 4. The front armor of the walker is a 12. In order for them to do any damage to this walker, they have to actually roll 6s, rend, and then score enough in the rending to cause a glancing or penetrating hit. Let's roll this up. Looking for 6s. And the Gene Stealers score 3 6s. So they start with their strength of four. They add six. And the rending special ability against vehicles means that when they're attempting to penetrate the armor of a vehicle, sixes indicate a rend, and they can now add a D3 to each one of these scores. So again, you're starting with three hits of 10, 
and we're going to see what, how far they can increase that. So here we add plus one, so that's 11, not enough for the front armor. Plus two and plus two, which means that there's two glancing hits because their attack against the Dreadnought equaled the front armor value of the Dreadnought itself. Let's see what ha happens to the Dreadnought. They roll a six and a five. So now the Dreadnought is immobilized because you take the six and subtract two because it's a glancing hit. You take the five and subtract two because it's a glancing hit. The Dreadnought has now lost a weapon and the and the Tyranid are going to choose to remove the close combat arm and it is immobilized. The Dreadnought gets to attack back though. Only one attack because it lost an arm at strength six. Weapon skill four versus weapon skill six. It needs a four in order to hit. It failed, rolling a 1. But again, Dreadnoughts get the Black Templar, except any challenge no matter the odds, special vow, which indicates that it has preferred enemy against the Gene Stealers. And it rolls a 4, so it successfully hits. Strength 6 versus Toughness 4, it needs a 2 to wound. And unfortunately only scores a 1. So now, the Gene Stealers and the Dreadnought are locked in close combat. But now the Dreadnought is immobilized, so that means that in the following round the Gene Stealers will be able to attack the back armor of the Dreadnought. So now we have concluded kind of the instructions on models assaulting a walker versus models assaulting a tracked vehicle.